Hello everybody. Across our oceans and seas, legends whisper of abandoned vessels that sail without a crew, the mysterious ghost ships. Today, we'll dive into these enigmatic tales. Are you ready to set sail into the unknown? Let's begin. Bay Chimo. The vast Arctic, with its vast expanses of icy landscapes and treacherous waters, has been the setting for many a sailor's tale. But the Bay Chimo stands out in the annals of maritime legend. Originally launched in 1914, this 1,322 tonne cargo steamer belonged to the Hudson's Bay Company and was primarily used to trade provisions for pelts in Inuit settlements along the Canadian Arctic. However, everything changed in October 1931. The Bay Chimo was on a routine voyage, carrying a cargo of fur, when it became trapped in the pack ice near Alaska. After several days of trying to free the ship, the crew made a difficult decision. They temporarily abandoned the ship, seeking shelter about half a mile away. However, a fierce blizzard struck, and when they returned, the Bay Chimo was nowhere to be seen, presumed to be claimed by the icy depths. But that wasn't the end. Soon after, the ship was unexpectedly spotted by an Inuit hunter, floating about 45 miles from where it was first trapped. The crew, reunited with their ship, managed to retrieve the cargo. Realising the ship's condition, the Hudson's Bay Company decided to abandon the Bay Chimo, considering it too risky to salvage. That could have been the end of the story, but the Arctic had different plans for the Bay Chimo. Over the next several decades, she was sighted numerous times, drifting aimlessly, resisting the Arctic's attempts to claim her. Despite being abandoned, she was largely intact, battling the harsh conditions with an almost supernatural resilience. The last confirmed sighting of this ghost ship was in 1969, a staggering 38 years after she was abandoned. In the years that followed, there were many expeditions that sought to find the Bay Chimo, but she seemed to have vanished into the mists of time. The Kalush More than just a ship, the Kalush is a spectral vessel, deeply rooted in the folklore of Chiloé Island. For generations, the islanders have whispered tales of this luminous phantom ship, which emerges from the mists and sails the tumultuous seas only at night. As dawn's first light touches the horizon, the ship vanishes, leaving only the murmurs of the waves and the whispered stories of those who claim to have witnessed its ghostly apparition. Legends speak of the ship as a kind of maritime afterlife, carrying aboard the souls of those who have tragically perished at sea. These souls are granted passage on the Kalush, where they find solace in the company of fellow spirits. As the ship sails, enchanting melodies filled with both joy and sorrow are said to drift from its decks, captivating the ears of any fortunate enough to hear. Some say the music is a lament for lost lives, while others believe it's a celebration of the eternal voyage these souls now embark upon. Adding to the ship's mystique are tales of sorcerers of Chiloé, who are believed to hold secret meetings aboard the Kalush, harnessing its supernatural powers for their own purposes. These sorcerers, revered and feared in equal measure, are said to be capable of summoning the ship at will. The Lady Loverbond More than just a ship, it's a tale of passion, betrayal and a spectral journey that seems to defy the natural order of time and space. The Lady Loverbond was a magnificent schooner, built to grace the waters with her presence. She embarked on what was meant to be a celebratory voyage on February 13, 1748. The ship's captain, Simon Reed, had just been wed, and in jubilant spirits, decided to set sail to celebrate his nuptials. Little did he know that this voyage would be the ship's last, and it would forever be etched in maritime law. As the ship gracefully glided through the waters of the River Thames, a dark storm of jealousy and rage brewed below its decks. John Rivers, the ship's first mate, had his heart set on Annetta, the same woman Captain Reed had just married. Consumed by envy and unable to bear the sight of his beloved in the arms of another, Rivers took a drastic step. Under the shroud of night, he overpowered the ship's helmsman and, in a fit of madness, steered the Lady Loverbond towards the treacherous Goodwin Sands. The ship met a tragic end, with the roaring waves and shifting sands claiming all souls aboard. But as the annals of maritime history tell us, this was not the end of the Lady Loverbond. Every 50 years on the fateful night of February the 13th, startled mariners have reported sightings of a ghostly schooner near the Goodwin Sands. Its sails billow in the non-existent wind, 
and a palpable sense of sorrow seems to emanate from its time-worn decks. The ship, caught in a tragic dance with destiny, appears to relive its final moments, only to vanish with the first light of dawn. Eliza Battle The Mississippi River bore witness to the tragic tale of the Eliza Battle in 1858. A luxurious paddle steamer, she was consumed by flames mid-journey, claiming over 30 lives. The tragedy of the Eliza Battle sent shockwaves through the region. It served as a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities of even the grandest of vessels. But as the years turned to decades and then centuries, the tangible horror of that night transformed into law. Locals along the Mississippi began to whisper of sightings of a ghostly vessel wreathed in flames on particularly cold winter nights. This spectral ship, mirroring the Eliza battle in her final moments, is said to glide silently over the water's surface, a haunting apparition of its former self. Fishermen and nighttime river travellers have reported eerie occurrences. The distant sound of a ship's bell, cries of distress carried by the wind, and even ghostly figures reaching out from the blazing phantom ship. Some believe that these apparitions are the restless souls of those who perished that fateful night, forever bound to the river. The Flying Dutchman In the 17th century, the Dutch frigate or East Indiaman, known as the Flying Dutchman, embarked on a fateful journey. It was said that the captain of the Flying Dutchman, often named as Hendrik van der Decken, or Captain van der Decken, was a stalwart sailor who was determined to round the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, even if it took him until Judgment Day. According to the legend, during a ferocious storm, the crew pleaded with the captain to turn back, but he refused. In some versions, he even murdered the ship's first mate, who had begged him to change course. As the tempest raged, van der Decken defied the heavens, swearing a blasphemous oath. He declared that he would round the Cape even if he had to keep sailing until the end of time. It's said that from this moment on, the ship and its crew were doomed. A divine force, or perhaps the devil himself, condemned the ship to be forever lost, sailing the oceans for all eternity. Over the centuries, there have been countless reported sightings of the Flying Dutchman. Sailors have claimed to see the phantom ship with its ghostly crew sailing towards them in the fog, only to have it vanish before their very eyes. The Cursed Squando The legend of the Cursed Squando is a mysterious one, whispered among sailors in hushed tones. This enigmatic ghost ship is said to appear on moonless nights, emerging from the dense spectral fog. The story of the Cursed Squando is said to have originated centuries ago when ships were the primary means of exploration and trade. In an era where navigation instruments were rudimentary and sailors relied heavily on stars and intuition, the dangers of the sea were ever-present. Storms, pirates and treacherous waters claimed countless ships, but nothing was as feared as the sudden appearance of the Cursed Squando. Whispered accounts from old sailors tell of the ship's sudden manifestation from the heart of a thick, almost supernatural fog. With no moon in the sky to light their path, many a sailor has reported a sudden cold, a silent stillness, and then the ghostly glow of the cursed squando. Its phantom crew, spirits trapped in an eternal limbo, are said to walk its decks, forever bound to the cursed vessel. As for its origins, there are numerous theories. Some believe the ship belonged to an ancient civilization and was cursed after defiling sacred maritime grounds. Others speculate that it was the result of a pact with dark forces seeking dominance over the seas. Jansing. The vast waters of the Pacific Ocean have been the backdrop for numerous tales of mystery, adventure, and sometimes the inexplicable. Among these maritime enigmas is the curious case of the Jansing. In 2006, a routine patrol by Australian authorities would bring this ship into the spotlight. Not for its significance or the cargo it held, but for the myriad questions it presented. As the sun cast its golden hue on the oceanic expanse, the silhouette of a ship with the name Jan Singh painted on the stern appeared on the horizon. A tanker of impressive size, the ship seemed like any other on a routine journey across the waters. But as the authorities approached, they quickly realised this was no ordinary vessel. No sign of life could be seen or heard from its decks. No crew bustled about. No communications were relayed from its bridge. Boarding the vessel, what awaited the Australian authorities was akin to a scene from a suspense novel. The ship was devoid of any crew, 
eerily silent save for the occasional creak of its time-worn boards. But what was even more puzzling was the ship's lack of identification. No documents, no flags, no manifest. The ship was a maritime ghost. Questions soon arose. What had happened to the crew of the Jianseng? From which port had it begun its journey? And what was its intended destination? Had they faced a tragedy or had they abandoned ship? The ship's machinery and engine were inoperable, suggesting that the vessel had been adrift for some time. Speculations began to swirl. Some suggested it may have been involved in illegal activities, discreetly discarded to erase traces. Others proposed more supernatural theories, suggesting the ship was cursed or haunted, causing its crew to abandon ship. However, the tangible evidence was scanned, making these theories merely the products of human imagination trying to fill the void of the unknown. Despite thorough investigations, the origins and fate of the crew of the Jianseng remained shrouded in mystery. Left without answers, the ship was ultimately towed to deeper waters and scuttled, sinking into the depths of the ocean. The Monte Carlo An American gambling ship of the Prohibition era, the Monte Carlo stood proudly off Coronado Beach, California, anchoring in international waters to escape legal constraints. In 1937, a big storm hit the coast, causing the Monte Carlo to break from its moorings and wash up on Coronado Beach. The next morning, locals found the once lively ship empty and grounded on their shore. With no crew or gamblers in sight, the ship's vibrant past seemed eerily silent against the backdrop of the beach. As time went on, rumours spread about ghostly encounters near the wreck. Some beachgoers claimed to hear faint jazz tunes and distant laughter emanating from the wreck during moonlit nights. Mary Celeste In 1872, the Mary Celeste, a brigantine ship, departed from New York City bound for Genoa, Italy, loaded with 1,701 barrels of industrial alcohol. Aboard were Captain Benjamin Briggs, his wife Sarah, their two-year-old daughter Sophia, and a crew of seven. On December the 4th, 1872, the British brigantine De Gratia spotted the Mary Celeste sailing erratically, but with her sails set in the Atlantic, some 400 miles east of the Azores. What made this discovery eerie was that the ship's sails were set, but there was no one on board. The crew of the ship, led by Captain Benjamin Briggs along with his wife and daughter, had vanished without a trace. When the ship was found by the crew of the De Gratia, it was in seaworthy condition, and there were no signs of struggle or foul play. The cargo of alcohol was largely intact, but the ship's lifeboat was missing. The mystery of the Mary Celeste has puzzled historians and maritime experts for years. To this day, no one knows for sure what happened to the crew and why they abandoned the ship. Bell Amica In 2006, the coast of Italy was to be the backdrop for a modern maritime mystery that would capture the imagination of the world the case of the sailing vessel Bell Amica. In the summer of 2006, the Italian Coast Guard stumbled upon the sailing vessel Bell Amica, drifting off the coast of the island of Sardinia. The classic schooner, known for its elegance and graceful lines, presented a curious sight. No distress signals had been sent, and the ship seemed to be in good condition. But where was the crew? Upon boarding, the Coast Guard made a series of puzzling discoveries, Personal belongings, including a wallet with money and documents, were found intact. A half-eaten meal laid out, indicating that the crew had been interrupted in the middle of the repast. Charts of the Mediterranean Sea, not typical for leisure sailing, were spread out. It was as if the crew had vanished into thin air. The absence of signs of struggle or foul play only deepened the mystery. News of the ghost ship quickly made headlines, leading to various theories. Some speculated about piracy, while others pointed to the possibility of a sudden natural disaster. Still, others whispered about the age-old legends of the Mediterranean, where sirens and sea gods once ruled. In the days that followed, it emerged that the sailing vessel was not registered in any country. Its origin and purpose remained shrouded in ambiguity. While investigations continued, the story of the Bell Amica became a modern-day legend reminding all of the timeless mysteries that the sea continues to hold. Joyita In 1955, the motor vessel Joyita, a 70-foot merchant vessel registered in New Zealand, embarked on a routine voyage from Samoa to the Toklau Islands, 
carrying 16 crew members, 9 passengers and Captain Thomas H. Miller, the ship was expected to return in two days. But the motor vessel Joyita vanished. After an extensive search, she was found five weeks later, 600 miles off course near the Fiji Islands, eerily adrift and deserted. Both lifeboats were missing. Inside, signs of chaos emerged. Personal belongings strewn about, a missing logbook, and a doctor's bag with the blooded bandages on deck. The ship's functioning radio was tuned to the distress signal, but no SOS had been sent or received. With functional bilge pumps not activated and no signs of a distress call, theories about the ship's fate proliferated, from pirate attacks to mutinies to supernatural encounters. The fate of the 25 on board remains one of the maritime world's greatest unsolved mysteries, a haunting testament to the ocean's enigmatic depths. Orang Medan In the tumultuous post-World War II era, international waters were rife with both hope for new beginnings and the shadows of recent conflicts. Among the many vessels navigating these waters was the Orang Medan, a Dutch merchant ship whose name would soon become synonymous with maritime mystery. As the Orang Medan traversed the bustling Strait of Malacca in the late 1940s, distress signals began to emanate from its radio. These calls, intercepted by multiple nearby ships, grew increasingly frenetic. Cryptic messages permeated the airwaves, the most chilling of which was the simple proclamation, I die. The urgency and despair in these messages sent ripples of alarm through the maritime community. Rescue teams raced against time to reach the distressed ship. As they clambered aboard the eerily silent Orang Medan, they were met with a tableau of horror. Everywhere they looked, crew members lay dead, their eyes wide with terror and mouths frozen in silent screams. But there were no battle scars, no signs of a struggle and no immediate evidence of external injuries. The ship seemed to be trapped in a nightmarish moment. But before a thorough investigation could be launched, the ship's tragic tale took another twist. With a sudden and violent explosion, the Orang Medan was consumed by flames and sank into the depths, taking its secrets with it. Octavius In 1762, amidst the burgeoning trade between England and the Orient, the British brigantine Octavius set sail with high hopes. With its cargo hold filled to the brim with goods intended for the Asian markets, it aimed to navigate through the treacherous Northwest Passage, a shortcut that could significantly reduce travel time. The crew of 28 men, led by an ambitious captain, were no strangers to the dangers of the sea. But the Arctic had its own plans. As Octavius ventured into the icy waters, it was caught off guard by an early onslaught of winter. What was initially a navigable path soon turned into a frozen death trap. As days turned into weeks, the ice encased the ship, rendering it immobile. Inside, the crew battled plummeting temperatures, dwindling supplies and a rising sense of doom. Before long, the unforgiving Arctic cold claimed them all. The ship, lost to the annals of time, turned into stuff of nautical legends. Sailors whispered tales of the ghost ship, frozen in the Arctic's embrace. It wasn't until 1775 that these tales took a harrowing turn into reality. A whaling vessel, the Herald, came upon the Octavius adrift. Venturing aboard, they found a perfectly preserved time capsule a captain's log detailing their tragic journey and the crew still at their posts, frozen in their final moments. Seabird The Seabird, a merchant brig under the command of Captain John Durham, was no stranger to the treacherous Atlantic routes, having made numerous journeys to and from the West Indies. However, in 1750, an event occurred that would forever imprint the Seabird in maritime law. As the morning sun painted the Rhode Island coast, Locals were taken aback to find the seabird run aground near Easton's Beach, sails flapping wildly but eerily devoid of life. Boards creaked and ropes groaned, but no human sound echoed from its decks. Investigating the ship, they found an untouched breakfast laid out, as if the crew had vanished in the midst of their morning meal. The ship's log, personal belongings, even the crew's weapons were all in place, but Captain Durham and his crew, there was no sign. Whispers began to circulate, fueling the mystery further. Legend has it that Captain Durham had gone ashore to visit his wife the night before the seabird was discovered. Upon arriving at his home, he was greeted by a harrowing sight, a spectral, weathered version of himself standing in his own doorway. 
Without uttering a word, the apparition faded away, and Captain Durham, overwhelmed by this omen, disappeared into the night, never to set foot on the seabird again. The tale of the seabird remains one of the most enduring ghost ship stories in New England's rich maritime history. While some dismiss it as a mere legend, the ship's unexplained desertion, combined with Captain Durham's strange encounter, has ensured that the seabird's haunting legacy continues to intrigue and bewilder those who hear of its ghostly fate. HMS Eurydice The British naval vessel, the HMS Eurydice, was a 26-gun frigate that set sail from the English coastline in 1878. Carrying a crew seasoned by countless sea voyages, none could predict the tempestuous fate that awaited. On its return from the West Indies, it faced a sudden and brutal snowstorm near the Isle of Wight. This violent twist of nature capsized the ship, sending it to the watery depths below, claiming the lives of all but two of its crew. Though it was later refloated, tales emerged of a ghostly apparition resembling the Eurydice, sailing silently amidst the fog near the scene of the disaster. Sightings have persisted even to this day, leading many to label the HMS Eurydice as a spectral guardian of those waters. Carol A. Deering The early 20th century marked a time of great maritime activity. Ships crisscrossed the oceans, carrying goods and dreams of prosperity. Among them was the Carol A. Deering, a five-masted commercial schooner. Built in 1919, the ship was a symbol of man's triumph over the oceans, designed for both speed and capacity. However, within a short span of its service, it would become one of the most perplexing mysteries of maritime history. In August 1920, under the command of Captain William H. Merritt, the Carol A. Deering set sail from Norfolk, Virginia, bound for Rio de Janeiro with a cargo of coal. The return voyage to the US began smoothly, and the ship was last reported in good condition when it received supplies from the light ship at Cape Fear, North Carolina. But on January the 31st, 1921, something was amiss. The Carol A. Deering was spotted run aground on Diamond Shoals, an infamous stretch off the coast of North Carolina, known to sailors as the Graveyard of the Atlantic due to its treacherous waters. Rescue teams approaching the ship found an eerie scene. The crew was gone, personal belongings were left behind, the navigation equipment and the captain's logbook were missing, and the ship's two lifeboats were nowhere in sight. The US government launched an extensive investigation involving multiple agencies, including the FBI. Theories abounded, mutiny, piracy, rum runners, and even espionage, given the political tensions of the time. However, despite all efforts, the fate of Deering's crew remained a mystery. Steamship Valencia In January 1906, the steamship Valencia set sail from San Francisco, its destination being the bustling port city of Seattle. The ship was packed with passengers, many of whom were looking forward to reuniting with loved ones or seeking new opportunities in the growing Pacific Northwest. However, a combination of poor visibility, navigational errors and treacherous waters spelled doom for the Valencia. Off the jagged coast of Vancouver Island, the ship struck a reef and quickly began taking on water. Chaos ensued on board. Frantic passengers and crew launched lifeboats, but the roaring sea and sharp rocks showed no mercy. Many lifeboats capsized, throwing occupants into the icy waters. Others, in a cruel twist of fate, were dashed to pieces against the very cliffs they sought to escape. Over 100 souls perished in the disaster. But Valencia's story didn't end with its sinking. Fishermen and mariners navigating near the site of the tragedy reported eerie occurrences. Phantom lifeboats rowed by ghostly figures, desperate cries carried by the wind, and fleeting apparitions on the cliffs above the wreck site. These tales grew in intensity and frequency, solidifying the Valencia status as a legendary ghost ship. The Lubov Orlova Originally from the Russian fleet, the Lubov Orlova was a cruise ship named after a famed Soviet actress. Abandoned in Newfoundland, Canada, due to debt disputes in 2010, she was eventually sold for scrap in 2012. But as she was towed to the Dominican Republic, fate intervened. She broke free, beginning her unintended voyage across the Atlantic. For a year, she drifted as a ghostly spectre, with only rats speculated as her passengers. Rumours of her sighting off the Irish coast turned the ship into a maritime legend until she faded into the abyss, 
her whereabouts still unknown. Young Teaser The schooner Young Teaser hailed from the United States during the War of 1812. As she prowled near Nova Scotia, Canada, British ships cornered her in Mahone Bay. Instead of surrendering, a massive explosion engulfed her. The aftermath was a scene of devastation. The proud schooner was now but splinters and flames, with the vast majority of her crew perishing in the conflagration. Whispers spread quickly across ports and taverns that a traitor aboard the young teaser, either out of fear or treachery, had ignited the ship's magazine, choosing a fiery end over capture. But death, it seems, was not the end of young teaser's story. For decades and centuries after the catastrophic event, sailors and residents of Mahone Bay have reported a strange phenomenon. On certain fog-laden nights, an ethereal glow can be seen on the waters, resembling a ship on fire. As onlookers watch in awe and horror, the glow intensifies to mimic the colossal explosion that claimed the young teaser. Locals have since named this ghostly apparition the Teaser Light. Today, the legend of the young teaser serves as a haunting reminder of the price of war, pride and betrayal. The phantom ship, with its ghostly reenactment, has etched the Mahone Bay into maritime folklore, turning the serene waters into a theatre of history, tragedy and mystery. Thank you for joining me on this nautical journey into the mysteries of ghost ships. If you enjoyed this voyage, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more intriguing tales. Until our next adventure, stay curious and keep exploring. Yours truly, Mythos, the Historian.